What up guys and welcome back to TV Time with Jay. This time we are here to review The Boys Season 2 Episode 7. The penultimate episode of The Boys Season 2. Now I know I have missed like three episodes in a row. But I have been busy these past few weekends. So I really do apologize. I had family from California in town for like two weeks. And then uh, just the week before that I was just really busy. So uh, I am back though with this penultimate episode and I'm glad I came back on this one because holy shit but before we get started as per usual with my episode reviews I will be recapping the event of the episode and then going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout so if you haven't seen this episode yet do yourself a favor watch the episode first then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below because I will be going into spoiler territory you have been warned alright so this episode is pretty freaking insane so, you know, let's quickly go over some of the stuff that I didn't get to talk about in the last three episodes. So, Homelander and Stormfront are now a thing. Yikes. Even bigger yikes. We find out that Stormfront is a, um, like, either slow aging or immortal neo-Nazi. Let's hope it's not immortal. And she was actually married to Frederick Vod, who of course was a Nazi scientist attempting to make the Ubermensch. So yeah, that is just oof. And then she and Homelander kind of team up to start using fear mongering and ta uh, you know s uh, similar tactics to uh, a certain um politician who is, uh, as of this recording, uh, currently indisposed. Get well soon. Uh, he said sarcastically. Um, but anyway. So, um, there's that going on. Of course, you know, Starlight is still on the out with the seven. You know, as she thinks they're not on to her, but of course they are because it's VOD. Um, and then there's all that. Um, Billy ends up, you know, reconnecting with the team, and, you know, he and Huey kind of patch things up. Uh, Kimiko and Frenchie are starting to, you know, reconnect now that she's, like, starting to open up a little bit more and kind of realize that she does have a family with the rest of the boys, so that's pretty cool. Um, and essentially, once they're able to get lamplighter you know out of the uh, you know facility where they were holding him and using him as like a evidence burner i guess which by the way lamplighter is played by the same actor who played iceman in the fox x-men movies talk about a twist of irony right he went from iceman to basically pyro which is hilarious but anyway so moving on we're gonna go ahead and just kind of fast forward and skip to this week's episode. So, essentially, the Congresswoman Victoria Newman, who's leading kind of the charge against Vod, Homelander, and everybody else with the whole Compound V thing, uh, she wants to use Lamplighter as the key witness testimony for the hearing up against Vod coming up. Now, she's like, this might not be enough, so we need an ace in the hole. And so, they go to Dr. Jonah Vogelbaum. Now, if you guys don't remember who Dr. Jonah Vogelbaum is, Dr. Vogelbaum is the guy who made Homelander. And the guy who was made, or he wasn't the guy who made Homelander. He was, I think, the CFO. And, or no, he was either the CFO or CSO. And he was the one mainly in charge of the Homelander project. And uh, he's the one that Homelander kind of considered a father figure. So that's pretty interesting. Um, and basically, you know, Grace tries to chat him up and he refuses. Now, Billy, Billy has nothing left to lose. So Billy is like, look, you're either going to give up the information or I'm going to kill you then kill your daughter kill your sons, your grandchildren, your entire family dies today if you do not give up that information. And so, uh, Dr. Vogelbaum complies. 
and we think you know things are gonna be okay meanwhile starlight is outed as a mole within the seven and so her and her mom are captured she's tossed in like this supermax soup proof prison within the tower so of course Huey has to go and save her now a uh, Huey and Lamplighter they're like basically just chilling out smoking weed watching superhero parody porn which is absolutely hilarious there are actually a few decent ones out there I'm not gonna obviously leave links or anything but there are actually some pretty good ones at least in terms of like costuming and stuff uh, and they actually know some of the lore which is really fucking hilarious um, but yeah so of course um, Lamp Lighter is just sitting there feeling sorry for himself and then you know Huey he kind of talks about his place in the boys and like kind of how he felt like he finally found something bigger than himself that he was good at he finally found a purpose but then he found out like very early that he was pretty shit at this too but that doesn't mean it has to stop you from trying and that's kind of what is so good about Huey's character Huey's character is kind of unyielding optimism in this bleak dark shitty world um and you know it was that optimism that inspired Lamplighter to get up or at least so we thought. So they managed to get into the tower. And of course Huey's trying to head for Starlight. But then, you know, he stops off, Lamplighter stops off at in the uh, like the memorial for the fallen, right? And then he's just like, they moved my statue. I wanted to do this in front of my statue. And then whoosh, he lights himself on fucking fire. Like, what? <laughs> He burns to death, triggers the um, sprinklers, and of course, with the alarm system going off, electrical systems and the sprinklers and stuff, this gives Starlight the opportunity to bust the fuck out of there. Now, of course, you know, basically he was like, oh, you know what, fuck you, man. And he's like, wait, 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 I need your hand. So he cuts off Lamplighter's hand and uses it to, like, free... Um, Annie's mom and so they go looking for Annie um, as Annie is trying to escape she gets jumped by Black Noir but luckily Queen Maeve is here to save the day and she kills him with a fucking almond joy because Black Noir has a tree nut allergy and uh, she kicks away his EpiPen and just like dies slow it's just like oh that's cold honestly that's Oh, that's really, really cold. I mean, I, you know, obviously the boy is no stranger to gratuitous deaths, but just that, that's just slow and painful. At least the big gratuitous ones where your head blows off, you're like dead instantly. He's just sitting there choking on his own vomit as his like throat closes. It's just like, ooh. But yeah, that's why you don't fuck with Almond Joys, people. Uh, but anyway. I, I like I like how that joke came back though. Like Annie loves almond joys, and almond joys are what saved her life. That she better fucking love almond joys now for sure. Uh, but yeah, so Maeve decides to stick around. She's like, you know, Annie of course is like, come with me. You're better than this. And she goes, no, no, no. I'm, I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick around. So she stays. And then, of course, we gotta cut a little bit. Billy has to deal with some issues he gets to see his you know asshole dad turns out his dad is as much of a monster as he is and then you know billy looks into his eyes and he realizes well fuck i've become my father you know that ultimate realization that you know the cycle of violence didn't stop with him and you know butcher is not doing anything in any way shape or form to stop that cycle anyway so you know moving on but yeah then we move to kind of like one of the bigger twists in here. So Stormfront and Homelander pull up to Becca's house to go see Ryan. And Stormfront and Homelander are basically giving him the whole Hitler youth treatment in disguise. And they do the biggest thing they could have possibly done and expose Ryan to the truth that the whole neighborhood is fake, it's filled with VOD employees, and that his mom has been lying to him his entire life. And so now Ryan has turned on Becca 
and is now with Homelander and fucking Stormfront. And can I just say, like, wow, Seth Rogen, man, like, you guys did such a good job at, like, just kind of painting, obviously this is a hyper-exaggerated version, right, but, like, the, the fear-mongering tactics and just how these words and rhetoric can get into people's heads and really influence them to the point where this guy, this regular-ass dude who goes through his, you know, morning routine, you know, kissing his mom on the, he um, on the head before he goes to work, goes to the convenience store to buy some snacks and whatnot, goes back home, uses the computer, stays on social media. Average dude. You know, but once this whole rhetoric of we need to be our own heroes, we need to protect our borders from these, you know, illegal immigrant soup terrorists, um, it gets into his head. And eventually, at one point, he snaps and he ends up shooting this poor convenience store clerk. And then, of course, Homelander and Stormfront spin that. And again, I'm not going to go into political talk here, obviously. We're just here to talk about TV. But man is this relevant i mean like stand back and stand by right like that that's essentially the rhetoric like the type of rhetoric that homelander and stormfront are preaching and it's just like it's terrifying that this over the top exaggerated like superhero parody is actually pretty close to home to what's happening right now like obviously you know without the superhero shit and the superpowers, but like, holy shit, this just proves what a fucked year 2020 has been, but yeah, um, so now Becca no longer has her son, and now her son is possibly destined to go down the dark path, now there's one more episode left, so there is still hope for Ryan, and I'm still gonna try to keep hope alive for Ryan, but with this show, you know, hope is a little dangerous, so I don't really know, uh, but yeah, man, this season has been great so far. I cannot wait to see how it wraps up. Definitely looking forward to covering that finale. Uh, but let me know what you guys have thought about the season so far, especially this episode, because man, that ending was insane. They do the, you know, VOD hearing, um, Dr. Vogelbaum rolls up and it's just like, oh, they got him. They got him now, and then all of a sudden, heads just start exploding everywhere. Everywhere. So I'm thinking it's either like the shrinking hero, like the, the Ant-Man equivalent type of hero that's, uh, you know, that works for VOD. I'm thinking it might be them. They might have like blown heads up that way. Um, Eagle the Archer was mentioned. The Hawkeye equivalent could be him. You know, sniping from a very far distance with, like, you know, some uh, particularly um, interesting uh, tech. Who knows? Uh, but something is definitely up there. Vogelbaum got blown up. Uh, a bunch of people, a bunch of rando soups got blown up. And now Stormfront and Homelander can spin this as a soup terrorist attack and increase panic and fear among the masses and you know therefore sway people to their side so yeah shit is getting real real fucking dangerous out here so yeah i'm very excited to see how this finale turns out and man uh, like and also the fact that it got renewed already like you know makes me like breathe a sigh of relief I, it makes me think okay no matter what the cliffhanger is at least i know there's gonna be another season so that's dope uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts and feels about this episode in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I review a bunch of other great TV shows as well, not just The Boys. I do like Lovecraft Country, I do Archer, and uh, once uh, more shows start coming out, uh, when uh, the Rona has lifted, or at least, you know production on other shows have have uh, started enough where more shows are coming back i'll be doing much more uh tv episode reviews so uh definitely if you like what i do here like i said be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell do all the usual youtube things but until next time this has been jay for tv time with jay and until the next review i'll catch you guys later peace <laughs>